What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable meat bag that also has a gun? Yep, that's Vampire Coast. In a nutshell, today we're going to be watching Corn proper this time. Knights of the Blazing Throne once again. Brazen Throne even. Blazing, whatever, however you wish to call it. Fine by me, we've got a couple of regular Chaos Knights and a Blood Shrine Valkia up in the air already screening out some gunfire and lots of Marauders mix of dual weapons and axe and board with some uh, flesh hounds it looks like scattered around the vanguard back deployment for the vampire coast cock <laughs> count noctilus ah uh, what a slip uh animated hulks yep and the lamper's revenge with some handgun mobs including the black spot their bayonets Charge defense, uh, got some polearm mobs as well, scattered around for anti-large duty. So let's just get things rolling before anything else comes popping out. And move along. Valkia, of course, up in the sky. Relatively small target, also has demon shield. She did not actually bring demon shield. Just spear slop near, still though, spell resistance and an actual shield. She will be able to block some of the gun firing coming. Obviously, don't want to take too much on the chin, but certainly, um, yeah, these guns are not the most accurate, given that they are, of course, just zombies. I mean, there is a ton of them, 120 in each unit, plus the shotguns of the Lamper's Revenge, but let's see. Korn's going to get a nice envelopment with their frontline combat units here fighting out these zombies. Dual hand weapons will be able to grind through the zombies pretty quickly, we'll, we'll, but will take a surprising amount of damage in return. Let's see how that goes. Of course, the knights are going to be the real key piece to watch here, as there's a lot of value invested in that uh, expensive cavalry, generally against the cheap halberds and historically cannons of the Vampire Coast. Heavy cavalry hasn't always been the best in this matchup, but... Given currently, I feel like a lot of Coast players aren't really taking much heavy cavalry, and the pole arms are certainly something you can potentially work around, especially as corn. Um, yeah, let's see how it goes here. A little spear slop near on the black spot as they are getting some nice damage on Valkia, who is mostly having to just avoid combat at this point. Uh, the Gunnery Whites, double gun grab Whites, of course, very strong, I'm a big fan of. They can just keep consistent pressure the whole time on Valkia uh, pretty much passively without the Coast player here really having to do much, which is really nice to have that kind of passive pressure on enemy characters, especially as they come try and fight in melee. It means that Noctilus is at very little risk of getting sniped himself, but uh, the Knights currently just biding their time, waiting for a gaps to start to open up as the Flesh Hounds are used literally as the vanguard to kind of you know, absorb and disrupt these different formations, maybe open up some different avenues to charge into. Knights of the Blazing Throne. Oof, and the regular Chaos Knights, too, of corn, just side plowing through. Absolute brutality there, and also moving now around, getting into the handgun mobs. Lamper's Revenge. Regeneration trait will be a bit of a double-edged sword in this situation, given that all the Chaos Knights, including the Brazen Thrones, have fire damage, so they will take extra damage from them. Yalki herself also does as well, but she doesn't really matter at this point because she's just, yeah, having a bad time still, for the most part. The Blood Shrine is a nice choice here, though, to kind of help these horn units be able to get through the zombies quickly before they take too much damage from the animated hulks and whatnot. Still, though, the Marauders generally just having a bad time, as they typically do. We've only got a couple having big success, but speaking of big and something flopping out, Korn's big sword comes flopping out of the sky and rains down, <laughs> pierces the ground, and just KOs an absolute horde of zombies, literally hundreds of zombies die in an instant. Chaos Knights are then able to move in and start to uh, finish off these weakened units. Yeah, this is great here for Korn. Lamprey's Revenge trapped in between two units of knights, one being the Brazen Thrones. It's going to be a brutally bad time for the Gun Crabs, although they'll be able to hold out for some time. They're not complete pushovers, but yeah, it's definitely not going to go well for them particularly. Overall, though, the balance of power staying slightly in favor of the uh, 
Vampire Coast, mostly due to this situation right here. Valkia continuing to take damage and Count Noctilus and the two Gun Crab Whites being mostly healthy. Uh, is it just one Gun Crab White now? Okay. That's fine, I guess. <laughs> Another one getting uh, killed off screen somehow, I'm no doubt by these knights. Anyway. Yeah, the corn support infantry pretty much all gone at this point. Not really surprising. Not really meant for a long fight. But the knights much more able to kind of grind things out here. Get through the zombies, even with the halberds. I mean, the halberds no doubt trading hilariously cost-effectively. You have like 800 value on 450 cost halberds. That is just fantastic. What are they? They're not even 450. They're only 400, right? Very good value, certainly. And the regular corn knights... Starting to want to uh, route a bit here, but the Brazen Thrones and the other Horn Knights pushing through. Using their Blazing Axes to great effect here. I think it's a little bit funny. Maybe they should increase the size of the Juggernauts now, because they are actually smaller than the regular Chaos Knights, which I don't think is necessarily correct, but there you go. Scaling issues aside, certainly looks very cool and has proven to be quite effective. So we can see now it's pretty much just Noctilus desperately trying to summon some zombies to try and shoot Valkia and finish her off, but uh, the gun crab should be more than enough at this point to send her packing. Yeah, you can see her taking a few more hits there, starting to waver and then rout. And uh, Marauder is desperately trying to distract, save their lady, but not enough. Pistol mobs can fire on the move, so as, as they're kind of jankly kiting away from the uh, Marauders here, continue getting a few shots on Valkia. Bombardment also manages to hit a couple of times. Relentless Rage is enough to keep her alive, I believe, and also unbreakable for a short period of time, but even still, still has about 300 hit points left. Four knights charging in to try and finish off the pistol mobs. And uh, right now, the Knights of the Blazing Braze Throne are just kind of hanging back. Honestly, the best thing to do would just be to keep them still, try and recover a little bit of their vigor if they could, since they are exhausted. But let's just fast forward here as this late game grind gets underway. The uh, Blood Shrine here, as long as it has units supporting it, that it can buff up, is going to be quite effective in helping Noctilus out here. Not sure exactly how many zombie summons he has left. I mean, I guess we can check here. Uh, yeah, zero, and I'd imagine Ross Moon Dial is also zero, so he has used up all of his summons at this point. Is a little bit unfortunate, but another bombardment there does some okay damage to those knights. And Noctilus himself basically has taken no damage, although the shrine and other units have been able to thin out the support of the Vampire Coast. It comes down to pretty much just the Corn Knights versus Noctilus and the White, right? So, let's see. He is, of course, an infantry character, which means he will be subjected to the anti-infantry bonus of the Knights of the Brazen Throne. 71 weapon strength plus 10 bonus versus infantry. It is quite a lot, and, uh, you know, that plus 10 also applies to the melee attack, of course. So, 72 melee attack is enough to get past Noctilus. Relatively high melee defense of 60 pretty decent, makes him very defensive, but the Knights of the Brazen Throne will have a good enough chance to hit against him that they can, yeah, it's like a, what, 46% chance to hit, something like that, if my estimations are correct. Let's fast forward here. Of course, the ones that are fighting in his kind of side and rear arc will be having a little bit better chance to hit as they uh, bypass some of the melee defense due to the battle mechanics. Regular Chaos Knights also. A few mixed in here as well. No armor piercing. Still only 46 melee attack. I have a little bit worse time, but even still, they're able to get enough hits, certainly, that uh, Noctilus can't kill them all in time. And a park map manages to take the win there just barely at the end. So very impressive stuff. Almost 4,000 value on the Knights of the Brazen Throne. They're, of course, the ones who did line share the damage to Noctilus. And just in general, we're able to cut through a lot of these high-value units, including that one Gunnery White who just disappeared. Um, yeah, I like the pick of the Hulks here in general. Um, build's fairly well-constructed, although I think maybe 
Could use perhaps some bombers. I'm not really sure. Something to help thin out the support units a little bit faster so they don't do so much damage to the zombies. In particular, if you could have helped keep some of these pole arms alive as support later into the game. Obviously, for Noctilus, uh, would have helped certainly against these very expensive cavalry units. But it's definitely an interesting one. Interesting matchup, given that Corn, you know, their offensive output is so high. Vampire Coast sometimes doesn't have time they need to deal the damage they need to to actually win, like in this case, but I love the pick of the Knights of the Brazen Throne and their usage here, and they were absolutely spectacular. Even Valakia herself manages to get back 1600 value despite being, you know, shot up the entire time. And the kill numbers on the Marauders are impressive. They were certainly able to come in and do some damage, which is why maybe even just a couple bombers, like one or two bombers, could have thinned out a couple of these uh, Marauders. They don't get so many kills on the zombies, then more zombies are alive to support other engagements. Anyway, kind of has a little bit of a cascading effect, even though it might seem relatively minor. Minor? <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, though, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.